Hey, I'm Nick Boy, and welcome to Pocket for Wednesday, the 3rd of February. Today on the show, more ant drama, one deadly sniper, and the death of AAA games. Probably because of that sniper. All right, here's what's been making headlines, and first up, the ant saga continues. Yesterday, Eric Tereshinsky came out and announced that he cancelled his game Ant Simulator because his partners blew the budget on fancy dinners and strippers. Today, those colleagues have refuted those claims, flipping the blame back onto Eric. It's Antgate. Speaking to Game Informer about the alleged reckless spending, former colleague Tyler Montz said, the picture he's painting about that is 100% bullshit. It was part of our operating budget. It was not anything that was excessive. It was all reported to the IRS. Those strippers were budgeted for and paid for with legitimate company money, damn it. Montz went on to blame the game's financial failure on a missed opportunity with Sony because Tereshinsky could not deliver a playable demo of the game. It's an ugly situation, like a colony without a queen. Moving on, and Splatoon has joined the Wii U bestseller list, hitting 4 million global sales. The unique ink shooter released on the console in May last year, and since then it, along with Super Mario Maker, has helped drive Wii U sales past 12 and a half million. At this rate, they may even catch up to Xbox. And a substantial update for Hearthstone is on the way. There will be two new game formats and double the amount of customizable decks, but when Blizzard giveth, you better believe Blizzard taketh away. Early game expansions are getting cut, so if you haven't played them, A, you won't be able to anymore, and B, you will need to craft the unique cards that are associated with those quests. Kinda sucks for new players who miss out on those unique challenges. And a slew of games were announced overnight. World War II shooter Battalion 1944, which is seeking crowdfunding. It will buck the modern trend by ditching exosuit and grinding unlocks in favor of classic shooter sensibilities. Just shooting your enemies dead. And Foam Sword, the studio comprised of former Media Molecule and Ratchet and Clank designers, has revealed its first game, Knights and Bikes. It's a hip little adventure game, heavy with a style reminiscent of Tearaway or Discourse. Most notable was the announcement of LEGO Star Wars The Force Awakens, and so I am joined now by good game director and Star Wars freak, Ben Shackleford. Correct, on both accounts. Hey, yes, it's, it's your jacket. <laughs> My shirt was too shiny. Yeah. The cute trailer got off to a bit of a false start when Microsoft leaked it early on the Xbox storefront. It apes the now famous first teaser for the film, which dropped in November of 2014. Benny, my boy, what do you think? It's adorable. It is as so always, cute. But I actually feel like the animation has been up to the ante. Are uh, you talking about the little sweat bead? Yeah, like on his head and the, the water on the X-Wing and all the rest of it. Yeah. But the thing I love about it so far is there's actually very little dialogue. Mm. And I know that now the LEGO games include a lot of dialogue. Yeah. And I actually preferred them when they didn't. I know this one will, but I, I like the visual humour. And that it do. forces storytelling through the visuals. Exactly, yeah, that's right. Yeah. And also I feel like there's a little bit of a disconnect sometimes when I hear Chris Hemsworth voice in the Lego, you know. Coming out of a little yellow Exactly, dude, yeah. that's right. But uh, adorable, I can't wait to play it. Yeah, I thought it, was, I thought it was really, really funny. I think it was one of the best teasers I've seen in a while for yeah. a game. I was talking to Pete about it earlier and he said that Lego works best when they have really strong source material. Yeah, and absolutely. And I think that's right. I think that that trailer, that teaser trailer had a lot of really great iconic mm. shots in it that you can just really cleverly twist. I loved the little guy with the light, like yeah, exactly. flicking the light on and off. Yeah, because it, it a lot of the a lot of it was like explaining the funny version of how that scene would have played yeah, out in real exactly. life. Yeah, exactly. I love the cantina theme yeah. while he's pose playing. Oh, and the thing I'm most excited about is all the merchandise that's going to come out with it. Uh, well, that's why you're in the suit. So I'm just warning the girlfriend now. Right. Okay. <laughs> The game will bridge the story gap between Return of the Jedi and Force Awakens. You are a big fan of the canon but not film Star Wars stuff? Um, I'm becoming more immersed in the canon. Previously, before Disney sort of retconned all the rest of it, I didn't really pay much attention. Now, I have read a lot of the books, read a lot of the comics. I don't know if there's as much story there as I really think, oh, I think Disney think there is. Yep. Um, so I'm excited to play some things that are apparently canon that link Jedi to Force Awakens. But really it's about, like you said, playing those iconic moments from mm. The Force Awakens with a Lego layer on top of it. That's what I'm really looking forward to. Do you have any idea what the, that story linking stuff is? Uh, 
I think we've got some hints from it, particularly more from the Marvel comics. Mm -hmm. Just because the Marvel comics are doing so many different things in terms of uh, going from Jedi to Force Awakens with individual characters and all the rest of it. Um, there's some good storylines, there's some not so good storylines. We've obviously got theories, I think everybody does, but I actually think the scene, Ray's dream sequence, has more substance in it. Is that when she, before she finds the lightsaber? He, when she finds the lightsaber, when she touches it. Right, okay, yeah. That's got more substance that I think gives clues as to what happened in that 30 year gap mm. than any of the books or comics do so far. Did you write this game? Because that was such a cagey answer where you said a lot but you never actually answered the question, which was just like, this is gonna be about blank going to blank. I'm a true TV producer. That's very true. All right, moving on now to Thing of the Day. Thing of the Day. In Call of Duty Black Ops 3, Brad Williams pulled off a feat of athleticism that would put the acrobats of the Moscow State Circus to shame. And now it's talk through time where you suggest a topic and we talk through it. Today's talk through comes in from Meow Indeed, who says, will the current popularity of quick fix gaming, like MOBAs, mobile gaming, and even multiplayer shooters, combined with the rise of microtransactions, mean the eventual end of big one-off 50 hour plus AAA games as we know it? Ben, is the AAA game dead? It's our job to answer this. Uh, no, absolutely not. Yeah. It is going to continue because we need a sort of a showcase. We need that kind of top tier to kind of show the rest of the world this is how big it can be. This mm. is how immersive and how amazing it can be. I do think they're going to get a lot fewer though. Right. And I think that's purely from an economic point of view. As graphics expand, as we demand more from our AAA games, better sound, better music, all that kind of stuff, it just becomes more expensive to yeah. invest in. And the trouble with that kind of game is then to continue to generate income from it, you need to continuously invest in it in terms of expansions and all that kind of stuff. Whereas with a smaller mobile game, you know, it is easier to generate income from it. Smaller teams can manage it, can get it out the door, and they can keep um, doing more and more of similar versions. A good example is the Go series from Square Enix. Yeah. They did Hitman Go and Lara Croft Go. Both really great games. Fantastic Played them both. Games. Yeah, loved them. But there's a model there that is not too hard to replicate. I'm and you can, it's it's almost like the Lego games exactly, where you can just yeah. plug different franchises into that exactly, thing. Exactly, that's right. So, uh, yeah. I, I think it's that middle band that we've really got to be worried about. Yeah, so things that aren't like The Witcher or Fallout. I mean, games like something that comes out this week, XCOM 2, yeah, is something exactly. that it's for a really niche market that mm. might be the one that doesn't necessarily survive in the way that it currently does now. Yeah, that's right. So they're going to have to push harder to bring in a broader audience mm. to get a return on their investment. And then is there a danger in trying to bring in that broader audience? Because XCOM fans have a very specific idea of what XCOM is. Yeah. And as soon as you start to bring in gamers like myself who aren't really familiar with it, then it's like, well, are you turning away from your core audience? So yeah. that's the group I'm most worried about. Yeah, I mean, that's a really interesting thought. I, I, I agree that they're they're not going anywhere. Like you said, they, they cater to different markets. Mm. And and I think that it, it you have mobile gaming, you have MOBAs, you have quick fix gaming, like uh, Meow indeed has mm. sort of said. But what you don't get from that is immersion. You yeah, tend to, exactly. you, I never, I have never been immersed like really in a mobile game or like a MOBA. I get deep in the strategy, but I don't lose myself in that world. So something like The Witcher is a game where you go, oh, I want the experience of mm. being this character in this world and, and finding my way through it. And I think that that's a valuable experience. As long as people keep buying those games, yeah. then those games are going to be continue to be made. And, and I think that as more people get into games, I don't think it necessarily means that games are going to be diluted. I think you're just going to get more of everything. It's interesting in art form, not just games, but in um, film and television as well. When you get one reaction, you get an equal opposite reaction exactly, as well. Exactly, yeah. So the more Transformers you get, the more whiplashes you get. Yeah, I guess the problem here is that AAA games, mm. as sort of like a definition, require a huge amount of money and time. Mm. So I think, yeah, maybe it'll become more focused and maybe that's not necessarily a terrible thing. And I think it also speaks to the averaging out of the gamer as well, in terms of we know that the average gamer is 35. Mm. Um, so people in that age bracket don't have as much time. So I think they're more selective in, yeah, I'm gonna spend 200 hours in Fallout 4 or The Witcher because I know I'm gonna get a good quality experience. Yeah. And then when I'm on the bus on the way to work or whatever, I'm gonna try Monument Valley Absolutely, or something yeah. like that. It's all that in-between stuff that, am I really gonna spend 
you know, X amount of hours in a game that I'm not too sure about. I don't know the brand, I don't know the quality. Yeah. So I think they're just going to get more choosy about it as yeah, well. Yeah, interesting. And finally, I would say if VR takes off in the way that everybody who is currently <laughs> making VR wants it to take yeah. off, like these giant AAA big immersive games are the games I want to play in Yeah, VR. exactly. I don't That's want right. to play small little, like, pu like, I will play a puzzle game, but I don't want it to be like where I go, uh, and I yeah, solve a puzzle. I exactly. want it to be feel like I'm wandering around like a like a forest with a sword or a bow and arrow. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it'll yeah. be interesting to see what happens. Uh, let us know in the comments what you guys think the future of AAA gaming is. Are you still playing those big ones, or are you just playing indie, mobile, MOBAs, sort of Hearthstone, that sort of thing? Let us know in the comments, and while you're there, suggest to talk through for tomorrow, and stay on the internet! because that's where Good Game is, on Facebook, YouTube, and iView. Want to meet fellow Pocketeers? Then join the Pocketeers Facebook group and Steam group. You can follow Good Game on Twitter, at Good Game TV. Follow Pocket, at Nick Boy, at Pierre, and at GG, at it Monkey. He's at Shackus, and there are links to everything I just said in the description below. Today's Thing of the Day graphic was made by Lachlan Orton. Thank you very much, Lachlan. But our Thing of the Day backlog is dwindling. So if you have made one, send it in via YouTube or a file sharing service of your choice. Until tomorrow, Nick Boy out. Do you want this jacket back? I do. I really do. Yeah. Take it off now. No, take it off now. Not in front of it. Take it off. <laughs>